Good morning or afternoon, depending upon your time zone. Appreciate everyone joining us here today for our webinar on solving plant data management challenges with Autodesk Vault. Take a quick look at our agenda here. I'm uh, going to just do one quick slide on a little bit of Hegerman and Company background. We'll just take a, a quick couple slide overview of Autodesk Vault for some of you who may not be totally familiar with it. And then from there, we'll dive down into some key plant data management needs, how Autodesk Vault addresses them, and then how some additional Hegerman tools and services can enhance Vault in the plant environment. And then along the way, we'll be looking at Dem product demonstration so you can see things in action to get a uh, better image of how the solution works and then we'll have some wrap-up Q&A and talk about potential next steps. Uh, here at Hagerman and Company we've been in business and actually under same ownership and management for over 34 years now so very good long-term track record very stable organization. Uh, my next line there keeps getting longer and longer. Uh, to sum it up, we do projects covering the entire United States and out of the country as well. We've been in business 34 years, and then 23 of those years, we have been involved in doing data management implementation. So we have a wealth of experience in that area. We've done over 1,200 successful customer projects. And then some of the tools we're going to be talking about our Hagerman software products that we have developed to work in conjunction with Autodesk Vault, and we've been involved in software development for over 15 years. For those of you who aren't totally familiar with Autodesk Vault, there are three different levels of the uh, core Vault product, and each organization selects the level of Vault that's correct for them. Uh, for most people, especially in a plant environment, Vault Basic is really not a fit. It comes with some uh, Autodesk software, and it's really just for CAD users to manage their work in process, a very limited tool. So for a plan environment to implement Vault, really anyone would be looking at the Vault work group or the Vault professional levels of the product. And then if we look at it in a chart, you can see as you go to higher and higher levels of Vault, you get more and more functionality where Autodesk Vault Professional has all the, the functionality of basic and work group and more. I'm not going to get into all the details here, uh, but you can see Vault work group is the, the highest level of the product. Now, some of the strengths of Autodesk Vault, uh, we've been doing Vault for a number of years. And since it is from Autodesk, it really offers the best Autodesk CAD integration and support. So if your organization uses Autodesk CAD software, uh, Vault should definitely be on your list. Uh, Vault has proven to be a very reliable and stable system uh, in terms of working reliably, staying up, very, very good in that regard. Uh, it does have a modern system architecture, uh, so it's not an you know, old, out-of-date system. It fits very well into modern IT environments and offers excellent general document management and security. So besides having the Autodesk CAD integration, also just from a general document management and security standpoint, Vault is a, a nice, strong product. Uh, also, Vault is very competitively priced. Uh, there are solutions that cost a lot more money uh, Vault is uh, uh, very good from an investment standpoint. And then, of course, it is from Autodesk. With their financial strength, you don't need to worry about them going away and leaving you high and dry. So for uh, some you know, core strengths for anyone who's looking at, at Vault, uh, Autodesk Vault really has some, some strengths. Now, looking a little bit, uh, starting to focus on key plant data management needs. Our company focuses a lot on data management in the plant environment. Um, 
then we also work a lot in the product design area. My focus is on the, the plant side. And there are some similarities and differences between the product design environment versus the plant environment. And we've analyzed and broken down what we see as the five or six key plant needs. Of course, general document management, basic check-in, check-out, searching, revision history, ability to manage all types of documents, review and approval processes, you know, just a general functionality, which a lot of systems would offer for office documents and those kinds of things. Then since most plants have an engineering department that are either creating drawings or you're collaborating with outside engineering firms who do drawings for you, you need a system that integrates well with the CAD software and CAD drawings that you have. Now, almost all plants, we get, you know, chemicals, oil refineries, oil and gas, pulp and paper, utilities, all operate 24-7. So at 2 o'clock Sunday morning, a piece of equipment may need to be repaired, so that maintenance person needs to be able to quickly and easily find that drawing or find that document to make that critical repair whenever the need arises. So that's just a hugely, hugely critical need in the plant environment. So a solution having an easy 24-7 search view print interface is key. Then uh, most of the plants we work with, they have engineers and CAD users creating and editing CAD drawings and models on the inside, but typically a very heavy proportion of the CAD and engineering work is done by outside parties. So a system needs good tools for collaborating with out, those outside parties, creating and sending out uh, document and drawing transmittals to outside parties, maybe uh, working with a cloud-based portal for uh, collaborating on projects and sharing files. And then when those new or updated drawings come back in, review, getting them imported into the system and reviewing and approving them another key need we see. Also, linking of documents to related assets. Like I mentioned, the maintenance person out in the plant needing to repair a piece of equipment, you know, they're not thinking about drawing number such and such or file name such and such. You know, they're looking at the equipment tag. I need to repair something on this piece of equipment. So a lot of times they want to do a search based on the piece of equipment and then have it return all of the documents related to that piece of equipment. So you've got links between the assets or pieces of equipment and the documents with one piece of equipment having multiple documents tied to it, and the same document may be tied to multiple pieces of equipment. So you have many-to-many -many type relationships. And then finally, another key need is support for engineering projects where sending, putting drawings out for change in the plan environment, those drawings may be out for change for multiple months or even multiple years, depending upon the size of the engineering and construction project. While those drawings are in the process of being out for change and being changed and those changes reviewed, the maintenance staff still needs to go on accessing the current masters or as builds. So we found it's key for engineering projects to be able to separate the as builds from the project copies. So maintenance is accessing the as builds while engineering is working on the project copies kind of in a, a separate area. And then when the new as builds are done, automatically release them to the as build area and have them update automatically. And then also in the plan environment, there's many cases where there's overlapping projects or concurrent engineering where the same drawing may be out on multiple projects uh, to be able to manage those relationships and go to an ASBIL, see what projects it's assigned to, and so on. And a couple of these areas is where normal vault, it does have some limitations in terms of the easy 
plant search view print access, the project managing engineering projects, concurrent engineering, and separating those as built or masters from the project or work in process documents. Uh, also, the importing of legacy data and documents. And then uh, at, at this point, uh, Autodesk Vault does not offer any integration, direct integration inside of maintenance or asset management systems like SAP Preventive Maintenance or SAP Plant Maintenance, Maximo, and so on. We do, Hagerman and Company does offer systems that ha does have that direct integration, but currently Vault does not do that. Now, in some of the, a couple of these areas, we at Hagerman and Company have introduced our Hagerman Connection products, which provide some enhancements in this area. Uh, we're going to show and talk about our QVP Connection software, which is our easy 24-7 search view print tool. Uh, we have AutoPlot Connection for batch printing, plotting, and publishing. We won't hit on that much here. Uh, Lifecycle Connection for doing email notifications. Again, this is not one we're going to focus on in this session. Project connection is one we've developed specifically for the plan environment, and we're going to be talking about that. And then our migration and cleanup connections, which are for cleanup and migration of legacy data. Uh, if we let me flip over here to Autodesk Vault, and actually. I'm going to switch vaults here. Oops. Got to put in my password. Yeah, so here's our Autodesk vault interface. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, uh, files are arranged in folders and subfolders. And you can click on a file, get more detailed information about the file. You can right click and do commands on it. Uh, you can do searches up here. Uh, so someone searching, this would be your main CAD users would use this interface. And then Autodesk Vault has kind of a nice search interface here inside the desktop client. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, just kind of want to get everybody a quick look-see on this. But for plant users, with Autodesk Vault Professional, they've got the Autodesk Vault web client, which it's free, which is, of course, nice, but may not have quite the user interface that most people would like. And that's why with Hagerman and Company, We've developed our QVP connection software where it can have a centrally configured and controlled search user interface. So someone in the plant, for instance, this one, this is uh, for a steel mill, uh, they can search on the mill, the line, the drawing discipline, the drawing type, equipment number, drawing number, vendor, project, search on any combination of those things and then get their search results. I've got a couple of user interfaces here. This is just a simpler one where it's searching on part number, but this is totally configurable. So if we go take a look at this, if we go back to the Vault web client, this is the user interface that comes up with the Vault web client. And from there, you know, a user can browse down through the folder structure to find the file they want, and then they get there, and then they can do a download and view the file. Or they can follow the breadcrumb trail back to the top. Um, they could also do a single property search here. Or if you go into the advanced find, this is where things get a little complicated.
where you need to do a search builder to build your searches. Whereas with our QVP connection, when a user goes in, they get a predefined search interface where it's already pre-built for them, again, however you want it. Um, so I've got some pre-built searches here. File name starts with, file name contains, area or cost center, discipline, uh, title. This is title information coming in out of the title block. Pick your vendor, part type, however you want to configure it, and then if I switch to a different configuration, you can see this one's a little bit simpler. I'm just going to say file name contains dot. Get your search results. A user can sort on any of these columns. They can refine it further to drill down, or I can clear that back out. I can search by vendor sort, or clear that back out, and then click on a file and bring it right up for viewing. So in the plan environment, we find our QVP connection software in conjunction with Vault is a huge, huge benefit. Uh, so the advantages, QVP connection, you know, easiest to use search option. It's a server-based configuration, very low cost. Don't have to worry about licensing and having users not logging out and uh, tying up your licenses. Uh, can also simultaneously pull files from multiple different systems at once, interface with other in-house systems, and so on. Now, our project connection software, it's mainly designed for asset-based process industries who have large, who operate large plants like utilities and pipelines, steel and aluminum, oil and gas, and you, you can see some of the others, others here. That gets away from some of the limitations of vault and normal file check-in and check-out that you see in most document management systems. From a, a CAD standpoint, that typically works well for discrete manufacturing and engineering change orders done on those product drawings. But with the check-in, check-out, and vault, it does leave your maintenance and operations staff with either the scenario that they're actually seeing incomplete or unapproved drawings or, or drawings for plant construction that doesn't exist yet, or they can't see the as-built at all if the drawing is under change. Uh, also, drawings can't be assigned to multiple projects, and you can't maintain project archives. So the result is it makes it difficult to manage engineering and construction or capital projects in vault, or you get into the case where you've got a huge amount of manual file manipulation. Whereas Hagerman, our project connection, allows for separate the as-built and the project copies to be separated, each with their own separate folder structures and access rights, so operations and maintenance can't access the project area. And then you can create one or more project copies from an as-built, and then it manages and controls all the intelligent links between as-built and their project copies. And then the as-built is automatically updated, handed over at the completion of a project. And then the project folder is still there as long as you want it. So you've got a project archive, and actually then leverages some of the built-in vault functionality to do these things. And actually, I can just go to vault and I need to get into Vault I want to use here. Oops, make sure I get my password in here. So here you can see I've got a 
a, pro a very simple project workflow vault. You can see I've got at my root level, I've got an as built area and a projects area. Then under as built, you can have whatever folder hierarchy you want, you know, typically maybe by, by area, building, drawing discipline, whatever intelligence structure you want. And I've just got a few files in here. Then under the projects area, you can have whatever folder structure you need there, where mine's probably a little bit simplistic, where you might have uh, under projects, maybe there's years, and then under the years, there's project number folders. And then you've got the ability then to assign, you can see project connection integrates right inside the vault user interface. So if I'm on an as built, I can create, I can go to any uh, one or more as built or masters, right click and create linked project copies from it. I've got an option to also lock the master to a particular project copy so it can only be updated from it, um, unlock. So the create linked copy is one of the core commands. The, the two core commands would be create linked copy that creates the project copy and then a command on a linked copy in a project folder when it's done releases new parent revision and then it would go up and automatically update the as built as as needed at the completion of the project. And then we've got a whole suite of other commands in here to handle all other scenarios that may come up over the course of a project. And then here you can see that my as built drawing one here actually is being used in this project. So I, I created a project copy and I prefixed my name PRJ1 since it's for project one. So drawing one has been assigned to project one. And I can see that link here. And then if I wanna to go to that project copy, this is just the vault feature, I can say go to folder, and there's my project copy. You see, I've just got kind of a nonsense drawing here. And then I can see the relationship. This drawing also has X refs in it. That's why that's showing there. I can see here's the as built. And I can go right back to it. Then if I want to create a second project copy. I can say create linked copy and I can so I can select multiple files here. I don't have to do it on the file at a time. So you can do it in batch if you've got a large project. And I'll say this will go in project two. Don't have to put prefixes on the file names. So now you can see if I go to, there are now, I've got some concurrent engineering going on. This has been assigned to multiple different projects. And I don't have my state turned on, but you could have, um, you know, if it was a project created a couple of years ago, uh, you would see the state that it's an inactive project copy versus an active project copy. So you can have inactive or old project copies still linked to an as-built and then one or more active project copies. And then again, in the course of the project, people would be accessing these files, checking in, checking out, editing, reviewing, approving, releasing, and then When this project is complete, I would just say releases new parent revision. It would use that built-in link, find the parent, go update it to the contents of the project copy, increment the revision, add to the revision history, 
and your handover from your projects group to your operations group is complete. And just to kind of see the flow there, uh, so we've got revision A in the system, operations and maintenance is working off of it. And we saw the project area, so we would do the create link copy command, puts it into the project area in our vault, where it's checked in, checked out, modified, reviewed, and approved by either internal or external CAD people. And then when the construct when construction is complete, update parent copy. And then now we've got Rev B. And at that moment, now your operations and maintenance is accessing revision B. And we've I guess I've kind of already gone through gone through the demo portion and just illustrating a little bit more on overlapping projects where the red circles represent projects that are going on in different areas of our plant. So you can see in this area, we've got a big project going on, probably might be bigger than is realistic, and then a smaller project going on simultaneously. And to see how that workflow would work with project connections, we've got revision A, create linked copy, assign it to project one, start making changes on it. Then while that's going on, that same drawing also gets assigned to project two. And we said create linked copy and lock Use that command. So it's modified. Now it is the only one that can update the master as long as that lock is in place. So now it's update parent copy then to get these changes down into project one, we can do the project connection command update from parent and then complete it and update parent copy to revision C. And also project connection would support it where you can just create a new drawing for a project in the project area and then just do release as new parent. Because in that case, there's not a link as built to update. It's just going in for the first time. So hopefully that gives a good overview of project connection. Another tool that's part of Vault that makes it really nice for uh, plant data management, and this is just a, a standard part of Vault, although we at Hagerman are um, expert at laying this out, is the Vault data standard. And what it allows you to do is create custom property pages in Vault. So here you can see in this case, you can track drawings by the project, the cost center, the vendor, the discipline, and then title information out of the title block. So these properties are displayable, so you can see the information. Uh, they're editable, uh, so you can edit it as needed, and it can be linked to your CAD title blocks. So what you put in here updates CAD, or if you have it in CAD, it will update here. Then these become your search properties for um, Vault or QBP connection. If we did take uh, take a look at that here quickly, ah, I didn't have I didn't have a password on here till this morning, so now I keep uh, forgetting to do that. So you can see all that information is displayed here or displayed as columns. And finally, our cleanup and migration connection tools. Uh, this is relatively new for us, and we developed this uh, 
got a couple projects now we've used it for, but came out of a, a major project that we worked on. Or we're working with a steel mill that hadn't lost control of their drawings over the years. And they probably had about 600,000 files. It's a huge steel mill that had grown to about 5 million files due to uncontrolled file duplications and being copied around where we go into a lot of companies. They've just managed their plant drawings and documents in Windows folders on servers. And that's where that loss of control and duplication has come in. Now they want to go to a system like Autodesk Vault, but they've got all these file issues that, you know, they can take the same, they would just be carrying the same problem largely forward into, into Vault. So before they bring the files into Vault, they want to get things cleaned up so they've got a better data set available. So some of the things we can do with our cleanup connection, what it will do, it's got a scanning tool that will go out and scan all your servers, drives, and folders for specified drawing file types. Now, your drawings might be DWG, DGN, TIFF, PDF, uh, Inventor, SolidWorks. So you can specify what type of file are we looking for, and then it'll go out and scan everything and get the basic file header information for each file and log all that information to a central database with one row for each file. Then, based on configurable rules, our cleanup connection will go through and flag all of the files that are duplicate and or outdated. And so in some cases, that's that may flag 75 or 80 percent of the files that are found. It's also got some capabilities to do file conversions. We had a project where their CAD format was DWG, but some of their non-CAD drawing format was PDF and some was TIFF, uh, where they wanted everything converted to TIFF. So we uh, cleanup connection can automatically convert all TIFFs or other formats into PDFs. Uh, also, there were multiple different PDF versions of drawings where Cleanup Connection can go through, find all the different PDF versions of a drawing, merge them into a single multi-sheet PDF with the pages ordered in descending date order. So you search on this drawing number, instead of getting 10 PDF versions of the drawing, you get one, then open it up, and then you can just click through the pages to quickly find the right version. Uh, cleanup Connection can automa also automatically rename files to new standards, and then also move or merge current files from where they may be scattered around into a new, improved, logical folder structure. And then from there, be imported into Autodesk Vault. So you've got a much cleaner, simpler file data set stored in Windows and then in Vault. With the advantage being, we've had people use Cleanup Connection to reduce their file counts by up to 80% to get rid of the redundancy in old versions. So the result is people in operations and maintenance aren't accidentally pulling up outdated files to try to do their work with or sending outdated files out to vendors to get some part made, spend a bunch of money, comes back and find out, oh, that's that's wrong. So there's you know, there's a danger factor, a productivity factor, a cost factor that has all been improved by getting rid of the case where people are hitting outdated files. And then, you know, sometimes people tell us, you know, it's just hours and hours searching through Windows folders to find the proper version of a file. So again, probably cut that lost time searching for drawings by up to 
percent. And I meant to show this at the beginning, but I think uh, we've got a little video that kind of summarizes our Hagerman uh, plant solution for vault. And I'm going to go ahead and go to now. So bear with me if I can get to the right window here. There we go. At Hagerman & Company, we specialize in Autodesk Vault data management solutions for plant owners and operators. If you work in the engineering department of one of these environments, you know the special data management challenges involved in your industry. They include making mission-critical documents easily and readily available 24-7 to operations and maintenance staff, managing documents for multiple complex engineering and capital construction projects, keeping current project documents separate from, but linked to, their related as-built or master documents, making all pertinent drawing and document data available in user-friendly forms for viewing and editing, and finally, migrating all existing legacy data, including files, revision histories, properties, file relationships, and more from an older legacy system into Autodesk Vault. Hagerman & Company has the off-the-shelf tools and vast industry experience to make all of this a reality for you. As a result, more and more organizations involved in industries from utilities, primary metal production, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, food and beverage, oil and gas, pulp and paper, pipelines, and more are selecting Hagerman & Company to implement Autodesk Vault for their company. I think I'll go ahead and stop there. And so I think that's kind of a, a good summary along with uh, back to this slide on the key needs review for plant data management. And then at this, that concludes what I had down to show here today. So at this point, I think we can open things up for Q&A. And I think I actually explained how everyone is on listening only mode, but you do have the question panel available. So at this point, we can hold it open for a couple minutes to see what questions people may have on the presentation or on Vault in general. And while we're waiting, actually, if you want to go over any wrap-up information. Yes, sure. Um, well, if you think of a questions later that you want to have answered, you can simply reply to the confirmation or reminder email you receive from GoToWebinar and we can route those to Matt or the appropriate party to have your questions answered. Um, also, uh, a reminder that you will receive an email tomorrow with the recording, um, with a link to the recording of this presentation for future use. And also just a reminder that um, a short survey will pop up as we close down today and uh, we hope you'll take a couple moments and fill that out for us. And I don't see any other questions, Matt. I don't see any either, so I think we can go ahead and wrap up here. Okay, well, um, thanks for the presentation, Matt. Thanks everyone for attending and have a great day. Thank you very much.